Welcome to the Corporate Treasury 101 podcast. In this episode, Guillaume explains the different types of cash pooling, namely the difference between physical cash pooling and notional cash pooling. We really had to get into this topic because it took me a while to understand it. I hope hearing my learning curve gives you value as I ask Guillaume lots and lots of questions here so that I really got to the crux of the topic, which is what we love to do here on the podcast. So Guillaume was very kind to bear with me to explain it in different ways so that I really understood it and hopefully you do too. Just a reminder, find us on Instagram at Corporate Treasury 101, where we'll be posting hot takes from all of the episodes that you see here on your favorite podcast application and some behind the scenes of us doing recordings, etc. Maybe you're wondering what the faces behind these gorgeous voices look like. Give us a follow and we might reveal our beautiful faces sometimes, if we get enough follows, that is. And on with the episode. So this is what you called zero balancing cash pool. Are there other types of cash pools? Um, so there are basically two. Uh, the first one is named physical cash pool, and this is where the zero balancing cash pool falls into. So the principle is what we just described. You transfer the cash from the participant accounts to the header and vice versa if the participant's balance is under zero. Now, the physical uh, part of it, aspect of it, is a bit misleading here. As we just mentioned, nobody physically goes to the bank, uh, withdraw all the money at the end of the day via the ATM, take her or his car and delivers it to the bank branch of the header account. Obviously not. It's just that the cash is moved from one account to another at each and every end of day. The second one is named notional pooling. And you are never going to believe this, Susan, but it's the opposite of a physical one. There is no transfer of cash done in this cash pool. So how is that cash pooling if you're not transferring the cash? So the first step is to, like for cash positioning, uh, you look at all your bank account balances participating into the pool. At the end of the day, you make the calculation of the consolidated balance and you end up with your notional, so theoretical, offset balance. Okay, so why, why is that important? The, your theoretical, notional balance? <laughs> so, the main reason is interest calculation. Um, say some of your accounts are in a negative position and are paying individually, potentially high, interest on it because they are borrowing short-term money, right? Other accounts are cash-rich. So, if the consolidated balance is positive overall or close to, you either pay no interest or at least much less while keeping first a certain flexibility at the local level, right? Subsidiary can keep a certain autonomy. And second of all, the physical cash pooling is not authorized in all the countries. Some legal local requirements may be um, blocking you from setting up a physical cash pool. Same goes for notional pooling. It's not authorized everywhere. So you would choose one or the other depending on the local regulation. I don't understand that. So... (laughs) Fair. So your notional pooling yes. is you're as you're doing you're assuming that if I had pooled the cash, mm-hmm. this is what the cash pooled position would be in my header account. Exactly. And the benefit of that is you have interest payments in your negative balance accounts. Yes. And you don't want to offset those why? So you want to offset those. As I'm sorry, you don't want to fund those accounts and negate the interest rates. Why? So you wouldn't because it would require much less setup. You don't need to make a communication between the different bank Ah, accounts. You don't need to make transfers daily. And you keep a certain autonomy at the subsidiary level. Those are first. Secondly, you could not be able to set up physical cash pool, physical transfers. So you'd say, okay, look to your bank X. Uh, in the UK, you say, look, I cannot have a physical cash pool, but I know this cafe is like always at minus 500 pounds. This other is always at minus 400 pounds and I'm paying interest on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the other cafe is at always plus 1000 pounds. Mm-hmm. So if we consider that we consolidate those balances, I will be at plus 100 and I will pay less interest. So against a much lesser fee, mm-hmm. can we set up a notional pooling? So I pay less interest on it. But then... Could you do that with two different banks? Would you have to have the same bank in each region? That's a very good question. So cash pools, you want to set them up 
within the same bank, ideally. Mm -hmm. uh, you can set up cash pools between different banks. It's much more cumbersome and with a lot of limitations. You can, but for instance, the interest calculation wouldn't be possible, Yeah, obviously. So if I understand this right, to summarize those types, then. Yes. so you have physical cash pools and notional cash pools, right? Yes. In either way, what a cash pool is, is an automated system, mm -hmm. right? You're not going there and doing transfers every day. It's really Indeed. like you set up all your different bank accounts and all your different regions with your mm -hmm. different subsidiaries or branches or whatever, mm -hmm. right? And then you say, okay, uh, you tell your bank, hey, look, at the end of each day, can you just zero all these balances into this one account? Exactly. Right? And the bank is automatically doing that for you every day, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, so that's a physical cash pool. Like the transfer actually gets executed in an automatic fashion, fashion yes. right? Then there's a notional uh cash pool which is mm -hmm. like hey look i don't want you to actually send all of this cash mm -hmm. uh, to this header account yeah but hey look um you can see that i have some accounts which are positive some which are negative exactly. can you just consider these when you're charging me interest mm -hmm. um as one account so let's assume that i did do the transfer around you know i'm not in debt and mm -hmm. um, we don't need to actually make the transfers but we can make an agreement there so that's a notional cash pool exactly and the reason you would do that is you might want a physical cash pool because you're paying something, everything out of mm -hmm. your header account. Yeah. Right? Like, for example, your accounting team mm -hmm. and your HR team and your, um, I don't know. Suppliers. Some, yeah, whatever. suppliers. They all get paid out of one account. Exactly. And then each, each account of the other one, so that's your header account, mm -hmm. and all the other ones, they're just paying their day-to-day -day expenses or something like this, right? Yeah. Something that can't be centralized. Um, but maybe you want to keep that autonomy. You don't want to go to zero every day, mm -hmm. but you also don't want to get charged for interest every day. So exactly. you go to the bank and say, hey, can we do a notional cash pool and say, hey, look, um, this is how we're going to manage it here. Precisely. So the other way around is also true, right? We talked about negative interest rates, but there's mm -hmm. also positive interest. If you have too much cash in a bank account, no such thing. But if you have a lot of cash in a bank account, yeah. then you're also getting paid <laughs> interest for that as well. Indeed. Right? So if um, you could consolidate all your cash in one account mm -hmm. then you get paid more interest right so if exactly. it's split across uh, multiple bank accounts can you also do like a notional cash pool for that absolutely and so the thing you just pointed out you could say okay whether either i have a thousand here ten thousand there and a hundred thousand there the positive interest i will get paid on it would be the same anyways so i would receive the same amount of interest which would be true but it's always about leverage. If you're a client who goes to see a bank and say, look, I have this amount of cash, 130,000, rather than here a little bit there and there a little bit more, etc. It's always about leverage. If you come and you say, I'm a big client, the bank will always propose you better conditions, both on the positive interest and the negative ones. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, they will say, oh, okay, look, this one is a big client. He's concentrating all this cash here. We have the opportunity to have all this cash there. We want to make the best proposition to this client. Otherwise, mm -hmm. he will go to the competition. Mm -hmm. So it's also about that, about leverage. Yeah, so it's being looked at as a overall entity, not as your individual bank accounts. Precisely. Right, so you want to be seen as the, you want to have big scale on your side. <laughs> exactly. Exactly.